Hey all, Rob here, hope you're well. This is the Decathlon Stylus. It is an incredible 2,699 pounds, which is just blown everything else out of the water when you look at what you get value for money wise. For 2,699 pounds, you get an aluminium integrated e-bike based around the newest Bosch generation four motor with a 500 watt internal battery that can also be upgraded to the bigger 625 watt hour battery at a later date. A RockShox 35 fork at the front with 160 mil of travel, 150 millimeters of travel on the rear supplied by a RockShox Deluxe shock, full SRAM drivetrain, SRAM guide brakes, 27.5 tubeless ready wheel set and 120 mil dropper post and the Bosch Purion controller. All of that for £2,699. I actually thought it was such a good deal. I bought it myself to try and find out like how good the bike actually is. So in this video, I'm gonna give you my opinion on how good it is, if there's stuff that I find that I don't like, do you need to spend any more than £2,699? I wanna take it in some proper trails and give it a proper test like I do with all the bike reviews that, um, that I do. I want to find out how far you can push the frame, suspension components. My goal is to share the overall feeling of the bike with you all. And ultimately, I want to find out if this is the best value e-bike ever made. And should you buy it? What I thought it would be worth pointing out is that when you buy this, you have to buy it from Decathlon. The order process is a bit funky. The stock is not that great, so it's kind of like this rat race where you have to actually find out when it's in stock and order it and i just got lucky and thanks to the guys on emtb forums who have helped me work out when the best time is to buy so check out that i'll put a link in the description but what we'll do is we'll have a look around the bike i'll show you the parts there's a few quirks as well that i want to share with you in terms of the geometry might matter to you might not but we'll cover those and then we'll get some trail riding in and find out what the bike's like so let's cover some essentials now it's got the bosch generation 4 motor and a 500 watt hour battery. This is the latest Bosch motor. It's the same motor that you get in bikes that are five, six, seven, even 10,000 pounds. I've done a couple of videos on this Bosch motor as well. It, it can take the new software upgrade that's just been released. Check my previous videos and you'll see what that does. It unleashes more power on the bike and this can totally take that as well. So it's got 160 mil fork and it's got 27 inch wheels and it's got 150 mil travel on the rear. Spec wise, in terms of like the drivetrain, it's all good kit. It's SRAM drivetrain. It's got a 12 speed uh, cassette and it's got SRAM guide RE brakes. So in terms of the kit, although it's like the, the most entry level kit, it is not like no name budget components. So that means in the future, you can always change out bits and pieces like the cassette and the, and the derailleur. It's all gonna be just standard stuff. There's no weird kind of funky proprietary cheap stuff going on here. And even the wheel set is fairly decent. The 36 millimeter internal width Sun Ringle Duroc rims have aluminum hubs and steel bearings and boost through axles. They're already tubeless ready and taped from the factory you'll just need to buy some tubeless valves as my bike didn't come with any. And although the stock tires are not actually rated for tubeless, mine sealed up first time without any issues. The tires don't offer the best braking grip or traction for more aggressive trail riding. So whilst rolling resistance is low, you pay the price when you need outright grip. Battery's fully integrated. It locks in with this key here. I'm not a big fan of keys, but loads of e-bikes use them. Um, and it's easy to take out. So there's this button under here, you just pull down and like loads of e-bikes, it's got this plate here. It's got a little rubber kind of siding on it just to stop the vibrations on the bike. And then the battery, you can see the power tube, Bosch in-tube battery. This is the Bosch power tube 500. And there is space for a 625 battery in there. And that's official from Decathlon. They've said you can put a 625 battery in. To get the battery in and out, it's really simple. There's no messing around with like Allen keys or bolts or anything. Just pull that down, no tools, and then just the key to remove the battery and you can charge it indoors. Speaking of charging the battery, what I thought was really impressive is it comes with a six amp fast charger. Now I couldn't believe it. Normally they come with like a two amp, which is the budget charger or a four amp, which is like the more regular one. 
Bosch sell as an optional accessory a fast charger. It's 150 pounds to buy. This bike comes stock with it. So dropper post, it's a KS dropper. It's only 120 mil of drop. Uh, so I need to, I normally like my droppers like fully slammed out of the way. So I've just got a little bit of uh, seat post showing, 120 mil drop. Um, it feels pretty good. It's quite smooth. It actuates really easily on the lever. So I've got to say, I'm very impressed with the bike so far. I'm on my local trails. I know them all really well. So I know all the features, all the little jumps and routes and technical sections. So I can just focus on the quality of the ride. I'm in the Surrey Hills riding a mix of red graded trails, slightly technical with some small jumps and steeper rocky shoots. It's a good mix to test the bike's frame, suspension kinematics and overall feel. Now I'll cover some more on the frame geometry a bit later, but for now, the bike is definitely on the small side for taller riders. It's got a really short reach with a really long chainstay. It's also got a bottom bracket that's quite low for an e-bike. I measured it at 335 mil. A long chainstay with a low bottom bracket actually makes the bike feel quite stable. Although a low bottom bracket can make pedal strikes a bit more regular, but with a bit of technique and practice, you can virtually avoid all of them. As I'm tall, it felt a bit twitchy at the front. I had to really think about my position on the bike so my weight wasn't so forward biased. It didn't take too long to adjust, but I can't help wishing for a longer reach. The rear suspension linkage worked very well, and on my first ride, it seemed nice and progressive. I could have probably even increased the sag a little more to make the rear feel more plush. The front suspension is a bit harsh over bigger hits. This is the most basic RockShox 35 fork, and there's a bit of chatter and harsh damping. It's not the bike, it's the fork, and I've experienced this same fork on much more expensive bikes and the feeling is exactly the same. The long chain stay and short reach with the 27 inch wheels is an odd combination. You'd expect it to feel slow and cumbersome in the corners with such a long rear end but the geometry and smaller wheels meant that actually it felt way more agile than I was expecting. And as I reached some of the faster sections of the trail, the thing that let the bike down here was the tires. Now that long chain stay does have some benefits when it comes to climbing. It climbs so well. It climbs very, very well because there's so much length between the rider weight and the back wheel. On steep inclines, it's very, very stable. Yeah, it pulls. And partnered with the new Bosch Generation 4 motor, really steep climbs are totally achievable. All right, let's talk about this geometry a little bit more. This is an XL. The geometry is a little bit weird in my opinion, especially if you're a taller rider. Now for a lot of people, it might not matter so much. It depends on how into bike feel and fit you are. The chain stay on it is really long. And there's a, there's a reason for that. The guys on EMTB forums have dug quite deep into um, this bike. And actually this frame, although it's a decathlon bike is shared across different brands. So they've identified brands that use this exact frame, but they use 29er wheels and those bikes sell for, between five, six and 7,000 euros. So it's like a, a, a standard frame that's shared across different manufacturers. And depending on which brand that is, some of them might spec a 29er or a mullet setup. So it's kind of like a frame that has been made for a one size fits all. So the chainstay is really long. It's 485 mil in length. There are some benefits to that. There are some downsides to it. It's on the extreme kind of length in terms of chain stays. And the reach on this bike is an XL, but it is really short. I worked it out, there's, there's no like charts or anything. There's nothing that shows uh, what the reach is, but it's only around 465 mil in reach for an XL. So if you're looking for a bike with bang up to date geometry, like short chain stay that can make the bike feel playful and nimble and a long reach for front stability, this isn't the bike that will give you that. Instead, the bike feels like it is very easy to ride, 
pretty comfortable, you sit quite upright, feel safe, it's easy to climb and would make a bike that would be easy to ride on a wide variety of terrain. Just know that on steeper, more gnarly descents, taller riders might feel a little bit uneasy, but there's a couple of things that you can do to help. The first thing I did was fit some wider bars. So these are the bars. It's got the Renthal 800 mil bars. This is the only change and the grips actually, um, because the stock bars were way too short. They were way too narrow at 760 mil. Just felt really cramped. So a wider bar makes it feel like it's got a little bit more reach than it actually has. Um, and the only other thing I've changed is the grips. So bar and grips, you know, you might be spending maybe 80 quid, 100 quid to get a different set of bars and grips, but I wanna leave it as stock as I possibly can because the attractive thing with this bike is the price. I don't really want to be buying a bike that's 2,699 pounds and then spending hundreds of pounds to get it to a level that I think we need, but this was just more to make it feel safe and comfortable for me to ride. You might not have to do this. Now it does start to get a little bit unstuck when you're charging fast and you're asking a lot of the suspension. That is the main thing that I think is uh, being tested. But honestly, it, it handles it okay. It's just a little bit harsher than suspension that will have a better damper and uh, better components inside. I have noticed that the short reach means I'm weighting towards the back. I'm pushing my body a little bit further back to keep my balance. The tire, the front tire wants to kind of skip out and sketch out every now and again. But all being told, this is a very, very impressive bike. Bosch motor performs really well. Battery life is pretty good. We've got loads of miles in today, done loads of trails. The rear suspension kinematics is actually pretty good. So the, the progression through the rear um, travel, I've not had any harsh bottoms out. So it, uh, the suspension linkage is good. I think if this was my long-termer, what I would do to change the performance would be to change this front fork not right away, just if I wanted to upgrade a bit later on um, and change the tires. I would keep the rear shock, it's okay. It's not the best, but the performance is pretty good. And I think with a different front fork, maybe make sure that you've got the right size for your uh, height in terms of the stem length and the bar width. You can get a very, very good e-bike, a good base e-bike for 2,699 pounds and have an awesome bike. So I think today I've learned that you do not need to spend mega money to have a great experience on an electric mountain bike. This is an incredible value electric mountain bike that gets you outside, keeps you fit, gets you out with mates, and you can just have a really good time on this bike. Yes, there are some limitations. The geometry is a little bit odd. The chain stay is really long. The suspension isn't perfect, but none of that really matters in the grand scheme of things because you can go out and you can have a bloody good time riding this bike with your mates. You can upgrade a few things. You can upgrade the fork in six months or a year. You can even put a 29er on the front and the rear. You can have a mullet set up. There's lots of different options for you to configure. You can put different tires on it if you want. You could use this as a commuter and just as a weekend bike for going out with your mates or your family and, and having a brilliant ride. So I am really, really surprised that you can now get, in fact, I'm surprised and delighted that you can now get an e-bike for this type of money. And this sets the benchmark for entry-level electric mountain bikes. I rode pretty much all the trails that I would normally ride. Um, yes, it's not as refined as some more expensive mountain bikes, but do you really need that level of refinement for the riding that you do? E-mountain bikes have become more accessible with this decathlon electric mountain bike. And I predicted it in one of the videos that I did earlier this year. I thought we'd see more better priced e-bikes and this is now setting the benchmark for those entry-level e-bikes. So massive well done to Decathlon because you're getting more people out riding, more people having fun, and more people enjoying some beautiful scenes like this. Thanks for watching. If you did like this, let me know with a thumbs up. If you've got any questions, put them down below, and I'll try my best to answer them. And subscribe if you want to see 
e-bike content every week. Until next time, I'll see you soon.